ESB Creates event surrounding our Game Change 2025. So yay, I hope you all are happy to be here and let's enjoy the evening. All righty, so to get us started, we'll of course recite our mission. Of course, the mission of Nesby is to increase the number of culturally responsible black engineers who excel academically, succeed professionally, and positively impact the community. Y'all didn't come off mute, but that's okay. I, did, I didn't prompt y'all to. But all right. Okay, so for a quick overview of our agenda tonight, uh, first we're gonna go through introductions, which will have y'all coming off mute. Uh, then we'll go into an overview of Game Change 2025, the document for tonight's reading. And then we'll go into our open discussion topics around the reading. <clears throat> All righty, so for our introductions, uh, I think we'll have enough time to be able to go around and for everyone to participate. So for everyone who's here, if we could go around and say our name, our Nesby chapter, uh, our home chapter, and then on a scale of one to 10, how familiar you were with Game Change 2025. So I mean, my name is Avery, as I stated before. I go to the University of Maryland College Park, so that's my chapter. And on a scale of one to 10, I would say I am about a nine in terms of familiarity with the plan. My name is Richard White. I'm a member of Washington, Washington D.C. professional chapter. On uh, a scale from one to ten, I would say I'm an eight point two. Good evening, everybody. This is Gabrielle McStanis of Pedro Region One PB International Membership Chair. Home chapter is Nesby Accra Alumni Extension. Game change 2025. I'll go for seven point five. Over. Yeah, if we're just jumping in, my name is CJ Kirk. Um, currently a member of the Nesby Dallas Fort Worth Professionals. And after reading it again, I feel like I can only say I'm like at a six because there are some things that uh, I probably need to reread it a couple more times for myself, so. Uh, I can go next. Uh, my name is Ashley Dahan. I'm the current national chair. My home chapter is Texas Tech uh, University. And for me, I would say I'm still on to 10. I'm about, I'm about an eight, seven, eight. That is karaoke from the University of Washington. And I could give that a six. James Adams from the North Jersey professional chapter and I would consider myself about a six. Hi, this is Daria Torres, a professional member. My uh, closest chapter is Philadelphia. Uh, and in terms of familiarity, I, I'd say a four, even though I have read it twice. Uh, hey, my name is uh, Rich Gilliam. I'm from the Research Triangle Park Professionals in North Carolina. Um, I would say my awareness is probably like a 5.5, so. Tanya Ford, I am a uh, professional member and I'm uh, located in Northern Virginia. And my familiarity is, um, I would give myself about a four and a half. Hi, I'm Imani. I am in the Quad Cities, so Region 4, and I would give myself a 4 I wanted to say 5, but it's been a minute. <laughs> Seth Rolander, uh, my home chapter is Washington, D.C., Nesby, D.C. Professionals. Um, and I'll say it's probably around seven or eight with familiarity. Devin Woodfine, uh, Cal Poly Pomona Region 6 chapter. My familiarity is currently like a tooth right now. Uh, 
Hi, my, my name is Mike Small from the Philadelphia area. Um, excuse my, 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 my ignorance, but I came in late. Um, what, what, what is, what is the, um, familiar, familiarity with? Mm -hmm. So the familiarity is with, uh, Game Change 2025. So Nesby's current strategic plan. Oh, okay. Um, my familiarity is about it too. I, I heard about it at the, Ashes conference or the conference before the last? Mm, gotcha. Mm -hmm. All righty. Hey, y'all. I think it's my turn. Good evening. Russell Marzette, National Professionals Programs Chair, my local chapter, the Central Ohio um, Nesby Professionals um, chapter. And I would say familiarity with the plan is a 10. I am, I am knee deep in the plan. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Okay, so that gets everybody. So we've got a wide range of our familiarities with the plan, but hopefully everyone's number will go up by quite a bit uh, by the time we're done with this discussion. Okay, so just a little bit of information about Nesby Create. So Nesby Create is a program that was started by our professionals, uh, our PEB College Initiative Chair, CJ Kirk, uh, started at the regional level and then brought up to the national level. It is, first off, CREATE is an acronym uh, standing for what you see on the slide, Culturally Responsible Economic and Technical Empowerment. So this is an area that has two main focuses. Well, one, it's part book club where you're able to have discussions that paint a picture on the socioeconomic status in which black Americans find ourselves in today. Uh, the next part is to really get us thinking about how we can use our engineering skills to tackle that predicament in which we find ourselves to put ourselves in a better position. So it's really giving context to that, that culturally responsible part of our mission uh, and making sure that we understand how our skills get skill sets as engineers can really help in uh, bring forth some progress for our community. Okay, and with that, we can get into Game Change 2025. So just an overview of the plan. So just as some, some additional, some original context. Uh, so we have Nesby's 10K by 2025 goal. So that goal for Nesby is to, as it says on the screen, uh, the goal of graduating 10,000 black engineers annually by the year 2025. Um, this is a goal that had been in discussion for a long time, but Nesby formally adopted it as a goal it wanted to reach back in 2015. Uh, so with the adoption of that as a formal goal, Nesby also developed its first strategic goals in terms of how it would want to achieve that. So eventually as those goals you know, had run their course, they were set for the first three years of the uh, goals implementation. Um, so then as 2019 came about and we were evaluating our progress and thinking about how we want to move forward, then we started development on this new strategic plan, Game Change 2025. So after more than a year of work by two strategic planning task forces, the National Executive Board at the end of 2020 formally adopted Game Change 2025 as the new strategic plan. So now this will see us through to 2025 in terms of reaching that 10K by 2025 goal. And then of course on the graphic you see here, this is where we were when we initially started, just above 3,500 when the goal was formally adopted and then getting to just shy of 6,000 by the time uh, 2020 rolled around before the adoption of uh, Game Change 2025. So in Game Change 2025, we have these five main priority lanes, right? So as they're shown on the screen, we're talking ready, set, go, brand, and grow. 
So these are kind of grouped in uh, two ways. So the first is ready, set, and go, which are more so I'm going to term it as member-focused goals. So this is where we will see some programming, certain programming development and really think about ways where chapters can engage with the plan. So ready, set, and go are ways that we are tackling the engagement and enrichment of our different membership demographics. So in the ready, we're looking at those Nesby Junior students, you know, making sure that they get interested in STEM and we're setting a good foundation for their success heading into college. So then in set, that's the focus on the collegiate demographic. That is again, laying a strong foundation for them, making sure that when they get into their college or university of choice, they have a firm support system, they have the tools and skills necessary to be academically excellent at that institution. And we see that capped off with this uh, stated goal of seeing folks graduate with a 3.2 or better. And then when we talk about go, that's the focus on our professional demographic. So once you're out of school, and then once you go off towards your corporate career, or you go into academia, or if you decide to go into entrepreneurship, how are we providing you with the skills that you'll need to be successful in navigating in that space to get to higher and higher levels of excellence, such that you can then reach back to others and help them on their journeys as well. So that first grouping is ready, set, and go, focusing on specific demographics. For brand and grow, those are organizational focused lanes. So with brand, we're thinking about Nesby's reputation among folks. What is it that people think of when they hear the name Nesby? Do people even know the name Nesby? Is it that we need more recognition within our community for our organization? These are the things that we're thinking about within brand. And then within grow, we're talking about Nesby's financial future. So how do we make sure that the organization is sustained to do all of the work that we're proposing that it do in all of these other uh, priority lanes? So then within each of these priority lanes, they each break down into their own critical initiatives. So those critical initiatives are what folks can really tackle in terms of, well, what is it that I can contribute to the plan? How is it that I pitch in and really carry out Game Change 2025 at my own level? So again, with those critical initiatives, you see that in Ready, we have that broken down into different segments within that Nesby Junior demographic. So in terms of making sure that the kids are aware and then getting engaged, and then you see that there's a, a desire to move them not just from you know, being, uh, being targets of programming just to get them engaged, but also getting them matriculated into being Nesby Junior members so that then they continue on to be Nesby members once they get into their collegiate careers which then goes into SET. So SET is where you see us focusing on providing those skills for folks so that they can be successful in their academic journey. So with focus on the retention program, of course, retaining our members is key if we're going to make sure that they graduate, professional and leadership development skills that will be useful for them in the classroom, in internships they may get, and that'll have them starting off on the right foot once they get to their professional career, when we talk about engagement with STEM programs and faculty, so making sure that our students know how to engage with these entities so that they can be successful, but also for the organization. How is it that we, Nesby as an organization, interact with multicultural engineering programs to ensure that the students at certain universities are set up for success? And then how do we provide mentorship opportunities for those students so that they are understanding what it is that they need once they get to the next level of their uh, careers. In Go, you see rounding out their skill sets that they'll need in the professional space. So with their technical skills, their professional leadership skills that they'll need as uh, career professionals, 
community service in terms of how we are impacting the community now that we are in a place to really start thinking about how we give back once we get to that point in our careers. That also ties in with the philanthropic development. And then again, mentorship. How are you able to provide in a way that gives back to those who are coming up after you? Within brand, you see within new marketing and promotion, and then also with uplifting and highlighting Nesby members, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about Nesby's brand and its reputation. So how is it that we're really getting Nesby's name out there? Does Nesby need to take out a, a five second ad in the Super Bowl? Does it need to be on people's billboards? Does it need to be in some ad cycle on YouTube? Uh, but then also how are we promoting ourselves when we do that? So that's where uplifting and highlighting members comes in. So Nesby members are out doing amazing things, whether they're college students who are starting their own businesses or whether they're lifelong Nesby members who have matriculated up to being C-suite in different companies or whether they've reached the status of deans of university engineering programs. How do we highlight what it is that Nesby members have done so that when people hear the name Nesby, they recognize that that success is something they want to be a part of, and hence they come over into our organization. And then in Grow, again, as we talked about, we're looking at Nesby's financial sustainability for the future, right? So within Revenue Lift, what are different ways that we're talking about to get revenue into the organization? We know that we have our partnerships with different companies, and we know that we're bringing in membership dues, but are there other opportunities? say grants and other things that we haven't yet fully realized in terms of the potential for revenue there. And then in terms of professional and technical education, again, we have Nesby members who have a wide range of skill sets. And if we're able to leverage those skill sets in a way where we can provide folks with certification training that would be relevant to their development in their careers, is that one way where Nesby can look in terms of uh, having some revenue and sustainability there. Next slide. Okay. And now we lastly get to think about uh, this timeline. So just in terms of looking at how, what we were talking about again from those ready, set, and go lanes, Right, so in Ready, we're starting small. We're thinking about how it is that we want to get students interested in STEM. And then as we start going forward, then you see that growth of getting them into their university, having them be scholastic achievers and doing well academically, and then going off towards um, their careers as professionals in academia or in industry or what have you. So I say this to mimic the growth of the member from ideally the ready lane all the way to go, but it's also how we think about things for what we as an organization and we as members might do in terms of how we're implementing uh, the strategic plan. So of course, we have an idea of what these goals are, right? We see in our document, we see in Game Change 2025, what some of these outlined goals are. But what does that really mean, especially when we're thinking about, well, I'm a, I'm a chapter level leader, so what is it that I should be doing? Of course, we're starting small. We're thinking about what it is that can be done down at the chapter level that all of our members would be able to participate in. And then we go into scaling. So if this works at one chapter, can it work at multiple chapters. If this is working at multiple chapters, is this something we're able to then introduce up to the regional level and then ideally up to the national level in the way that other programs have been done in the past? So if you think like a walk for education, or you even think like, as I mentioned before, Nesby Create, something that was started down at the regional level and then brought up to the national level, and is in alignment with the work we're trying to do within Game Change 2025. Are there ways where we can see ourselves as chapter leaders, as members, 
doing some work that starts small and then has the opportunity to scale into reaching these large goals that we have. But yeah. So that's a quick overview of Game Change 2025. And so now I'd like to get us into our open discussion questions. Um, so just for starters, what elements of the plan resonated with you as a member? I can go first. So I'm Tyus again. And I think the, the part that I resonated with a lot is the outreach and the motivating of people to get into not just STEM or not just Nesby, but also STEM, right? Because you realize when you look at the stats, like we don't have too many black people or people of color in those many technical fields and all that. And we want to like increase our numbers over there. And, you know, there's this woke that's starting to like happen, guys venturing into those fields. And once we feel like, you know, say you're into computer science, you're going to make it at big tech, something like that. The next, next thing, you know, join Nesby because we have this huge vision of graduating 10K engineers in three years. And we know that you're a part of it. And it leads me to think that, you know, I've been pitching Nesby to a lot of my friends, family members. And now that I think about it, it's one way to get them involved in society. And it's another way for them to actually realize that they're also part of this even before they join the whole thing. So I think that's what I realized. Thank you, Titus. Uh, Devin, I see that your hand is up. I'll let you go ahead. So for me, the part of the plan that resonates with me the most is, you know, trying to empower our members who have a variety of different skill sets to be able to utilize them, not only help them better themselves as a professional, but to also help in the recruitment process. You know, being able to say that, oh, Nesby helped me get this certification, which led me to get a full-time position in this company. There's always great ways to, you know, show some of the benefits that being Nesby will have on yourself as an um, engineer or a STEM major. Thank you for that, Devin. Anyone else want to talk about what part of the plan really resonated with them? Yes. Hi, this is Mike, Mike, Mike Smallwood. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, what resonated with me is just putting Nesby out there. Uh, just to let the public know and our community know that we do exist. Um, and, and that's what resonated with me. Um, I, I'll add, um, part of the plan that resonates for me is, I think the the plan is pretty ambitious and it's Nesby trying to really, you know, like I guess the last slide said, like think big. So, I mean, I think about game change, what that means to me, just like, I mean, I think the game is kind of more like slang, I guess you can look at it in a way like, um, so changing the game, it's like the game to me is just life, you know, going outside every day, um, looking at the news, we see all types of stuff going on. So Nesby, we're looking at ourselves. I mean, that's, that's this is the way I look at it, right? It's Nesby looking at ourselves and be like, okay, how can we impact the game of life, right? And as engineers, I think we have a real potential to do that in a major way. Um, so, yeah, that's that's uh, kind of how I'm thinking about this. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, CJ. All righty. So now. Going into our, our second question for open discussion, uh, how do we think members impact the success of the strategic plan? Um, this, is, this is James Adams. Um, I was thinking about the first question, but I'll answer the second one. Um, I, I think by members talking about the plan, being a little bit knowledgeable about the plan, and to help spread the fact that the plan even exists is how we can have the biggest impact. Because I think even Nesby members might not be as aware 
of the plan or um, cognizant or familiar with the plan as they should be. And I know there's some black engineers who might not even be a part of NSBE who would join it based on the fact that we do have a plan, we do have a vision, we do have a goal. So you know, I, I, I think that would probably be the way that members can most impact the success of the plan. That's fantastic. Thank you, James. Um, Richard, I see you've got your hand up and then titles you'll go yeah, after. Yeah, James, again, I echo what James have said. I mean, I think for me, and I've been a NESB member a very long time. I've been, you know, had, had many NESB positions, been definitely um, part of the, you know, 10K by 2020, 2025 initiative. But, you know, we're talking about this is 2022 post COVID, Black Lives Matter. Um, my fellow members, you know, giving millions of dollars to other organizations. You know, when I say members, members that I, that were NSB members, affiliated with NSB, you know, when I was, you know, young. But having this game changing 2025, allowing to reconnect and, and, and conversate. And, and, and anytime I speak about NSB has been such a, a it's been a very positive um, step, you know, in terms of just, you know, um, you know, um, continually being engaged and feeling like you know we're 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 at the we're at the, the peak of going to another another level, and that's been very helpful in in conversations and and, and as to what James has said, you know, bringing people aware that Nezzy's here and trying to do some some great things and and um, in impacting our community. Yeah, I could echo James and Richard's sentiments and say that also members can impact by first acknowledging that everybody is vital to this, everybody is important to this. You know, no matter how experienced you are or inexperienced, you know, from pre collegiate to professional, from junior in college to like third year masters. Um, everybody has a role to play in this because if we realize that we're the single most important piece in Nesby, then I think that in itself can really motivate us to go that far. Perfect. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Titus. Um, Devin, to answer your question and your questions in the chat, um, for anyone who can't see, Devin asked, is there a current count of how many Black engineers slash STEM majors have graduated? Are we only counting those connected? to Nesby. So for the second question, so for the current count, I'm assuming you mean, is there a count for 2021 or even 2022, since that's the year that just passed? Those numbers have not been published yet. Um, but for the numbers that we are counting, these are not simply those who are connected to Nesby. This is in total. And then Daria, I see you've got your hand up. Thank you. I um, The thing that I, I appreciate about the plan and that I know uh, most professional organizations uh, wrestle with is um, dealing with the continuum, right, of development of any particular member or potential member or alumni member um, and what even is an alum. Um, and, and so in the context of, of Nesby, just where I am in my life, what I think about is what would Nesby have to, to do in order to attract professional members who were not active as students? And that's just a good thought exercise to consider what needs to happen at that level um, to, to be more of a resource and more of an attractive force, if you will, uh, at that stage of the continuum. Um, so that's something that I've, I've just been mulling. Uh, and as I look back over the plan, don't know that it necessarily uh, delves too deeply into that. The plan is pretty much focused still on graduating a particular number by a particular time. Yeah, um, I also wanna add, um... I think members can, I mean, I think one of the more important parts of Nesby are our chapter leaders. Um, and I look at them as like community builders, right? They just kind of like 
create a space for people to come together and do the great things Nesby does. So um, I think, you know, the more people we have step up to be leaders in Nesby, the more they can go forth and create opportunities for people that maybe haven't been in the organization for a while to come back and, you know, um, I mean, so it's like building communities, right? So we're having like a PCI event. So, you know, it's easy to just come and volunteer, you know? So it's not even something like really takes a lot, you know? Um, so you can start small. So just creating those kind of opportunities for, you know, anybody and advertising them as well. Thank you, Daria. Thank you, CJ. Um, Devin, I want to make sure I understand your question. When you say overall number, do you mean if we're summing the, uh, ooh, okay, screenshot sharing, that's okay. So my, yeah, my question basically is, you know, we're trying to graduate 10K. How many have graduated since the start of our mission to, um, now and how many more do we need to get to the 10k got you okay so the 10k is not a summation number for how many folks were trying to graduate in total um it's the plan to graduate 10k every year starting in 2025 so mm -hmm. so those numbers that you saw were on that first slide were how many black engineering majors had graduated in that year. So that was over 3,000 in over 3,500 in 2015 and 2020, it was just shy of 6,000. So the question is, how are we going to get that just shy of 6,000 number from 2020 to be 10,000 plus in 2025, but then sustain that um, in time. Yeah, just if I could just chime in with just a quick background point, it might be mm -hmm. helpful uh, if people are curious about the genesis of that number. Um, I'm, I'm familiar from some work I was doing with uh, Nesby headquarters back in 2015, 2016 on the 50K coalition. Um, if people look up 50kcoalition.org, if you're not familiar, that was a partnership between Nesby and the other diversity engineering organizations where essentially they collectively agreed on 50K as the goal annually and each took a slice of that pie. So that, that target was set back in 2015. So it was, a, it was a 10 year outlook that they had. There we go. Thank you, Daria, for that context. And then thank you, I think CJ and Devin both dropped the link in the chat for the 50K Coalition's website. All righty. So now I'm going to pass it off now to our National Torch Chair, Ashley, to take us through this next part of our open discussion. Hello, everybody. Um, as Avi said, my name is Ashley Dehan, and I am the National Torch Chair. And I would like to start off by asking you all this question. So, um, Gang Chase 2025 calls for, oh, well, well, sorry, not asking this question, saying the statement. I apologize. Game Chase 2025 calls for us to redefine community service within, within NSB. So, that's kind of like what my role is as the Torch Chair. And going in like kind of showing you guys a breakdown of like a few of the things that I do. So first and foremost, STEM community training, um, informal engineering and science education, uh, technology expertise service, and traditional community service as we know. Um, so my first question, how do we redefine community service, what community service looks like in Nesby to address the modern challenges of the Black community? All right, Richard, take it away. Um, so I, I'm some some background. I, I just feel it's it's time. I feel like um, the leaders that are coming, the zero to five leaders, and, and I'm, I'm including you know um, the undergraduate and leaders, um, including young young leaders. Is I believe that 
we're ready to 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 um, bring the masses together to require community service as other organizations do in you know in our in the black community. I mean, we should be at a place now that we could we could raise the accountability and responsibility of every member, you know, and 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 require them to commit and to commute and to share what they do relative to community service and what they do relative to the mission as well as the game changing 2025. I think we're at the you know the, the place where we where that is a game changing shift in how we um, bring accountability response you know kind of partner with our membership to bring that accountability responsibility which then get ties into what has been said how people need to understand you know our strategic plan be a part of that strategic plan at every level at every demographic especially at every leadership level in, in the society yes i like that it's a lot devin so i feel like coming to the conclusion that social media is going to be the crux of any uh strategy that nesby is trying to reach out to the community and what i mean by that is us controlling our narratives and trying to reach out to the younger generation and bridging that with the older ones i feel like a lot of times communication in this week isn't necessarily the best and maybe that's because certain things are a little bit not up to date with the current times and so maybe trying to reach out to younger students to help guide them through learning about stem or helping them through their homework through like virtual opportunities would be great ways of doing that and i kind of feel the way that you know we're like the premier black tech organization and we don't have a prominent uh like project to build our own social network that we can capitalize here and you know spread throughout the world so those are like things that i've always thought about you know nesby that there's so much talent here and i would just love to see us um kind of own it own it for like specific like critical technologies that would really serve the black community Yes, these are good ones. Um, yeah, definitely. That's one of the things I do see Nesby hopefully going in the future is ownership, owning our own technology. And you brought up a great one, our own social media network and platform. I think that would be amazing. And as far as social media goes, um, I know the program zone, we have a few things cooking up as far as like, you know, putting ourselves out there more on social media. So stay tuned. All right, uh, next question. So what grand challenges should Nesby take on to address or highlight the critical issues in our communities? So more specifically, like when it comes to technology and the future and its future application in um, our communities. Devin, is your hand still up or is this from the previous question? Yes, my hand's oh. still up. So uh, major one is connectivity making sure that you know we have access to quality internet service will obviously be the most important thing from applying to jobs going to school to doing interviews if you don't have internet you know if you don't have decent internet i don't understand how you're making it in society right now <laughs> another one would probably be either access to energy or um clean water sources so those are usually my top three to worry about specifically in black communities because we tend to live in environments where the infrastructure has been poorly maintained and they might have like 5g towers but somehow we don't have access to that 5g even though it's right in our backyards great point is anybody oh go ahead cj so I started kind of thinking about what are some of the areas or members that we like are leaking out of the pipeline, causing us not, I mean, maybe, you know, that could help us if we gain them, reach 10K by 2025. So, so I, I think a lot of people maybe have like family issues at home that, you know, maybe prevents them from being able to participate like they would like to. So I guess trying to focus on something that can alleviate that, you know, for households, um, and I, that's probably doesn't, you know, something like that wouldn't just fall on Nesby's shoulders, right? Um, maybe we can partner with other organizations to work on, I don't know, some type of like daycare or like um, food service or, um, yeah, I mean, we have our programs too. So um, just thinking more like, how can we help parents out maybe? And 
yeah, that how can we really take us some weight off their shoulders? Yeah, I agree with that. And I feel like one thing that we can start, we should start doing this year is, you know, using our chapters to go into these neighborhoods and feel and figure out what does what does the community need? Like, what do you guys feel like you're lacking? And let's see how we can help in the situation. So, yes, I definitely agree. Um, Titus. I'm going to side with Devin on this one and highlight the challenge of digital inequity where say not every area that's, you know, that has a large population of color has access to, you know, the digital resources we need, you know, whether it's say like broadband computers and all that. And I'll give an example with my local state. I did some research a couple of years ago and I realized that I think it's say 6% of like the black population making like under 30K can access the internet, let alone a computer as compared to like 35% of their white counterparts and 32% of their Asian counterparts, right? So I realized that this digital inequity really hurts us as BIPOC and it's up to say NSB to, you know, take on this challenge with local authorities, local governments and see what infrastructure they can put to, you know, address this. It's a very good idea. Does anyone else have any suggestions or is, would like to answer the question? I'd just like to piggyback on what was just said. So I definitely infrastructure is important. And as, and as if you don't know, historically, you know, the society tended to, um, um, you know, attract those that were already at a certain academic level um, you know, you know, I wouldn't say the cream of the crop, but you know, as, as you, as you, as you know, those from middle class families, no matter what area of the country, from what region, you know, those, you know, came from, you know, um, you know, well balanced families, at least good education, and and I think we need to have a greater focus on 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 those on those those of us that don't have that, you know a more a concentrated effort, just like you provide an internet access, the same thing as saying, hey, well, we have, we know that at a Nesby Junior chapter, you know, the top 5% is the one that's competing. How can we re, re, refocus our efforts to ensure that it's 50% of a Nesby Junior chapter, um, they're competing and, and, and getting and fulfilling their interests, you know, learning about STEM, you know, whether, whether, whether they, um, end up, you know, going to college or not, we can we can help um, plug up some of those leaks by focusing on those members that are in, at Nes on our Nesby Junior level who are just there but not really getting the support. We need to have a more concentrated effort to support them, to help them along, to kind of, you know, um, plug the leak. Okay, so we have a comment in the chat. So Russell says, so is it only the digital space that possesses a challenge to our communities? What other emerging areas are critical to our community's health and well-being? I know infrastructure was one that was touched on. Oh, go ahead, James. Yeah, infrastructure. Um, so just as point, way of background, um, I'm a civil engineer and I've been in the transportation, you know, field for all, all of my career. And obviously broadband and internet is part of communication and infrastructure. But even getting from A to B, um, getting from your home to a job is a challenge. Um, I'm part of a, um, a group in Newark called the Newark Workforce Development. And we train Newark residents to be able to have, you know, good paying union jobs, technical jobs. But two of the challenges that we face that it might be a little bit outside of engineering is one transportation and two childcare. Because due to the pandemic, over 50, this is in New Jersey, it might not be the same all over the country, more than 50 to 60% of childcare places close down. So now, even if we can get those parents to the jobs, which we're having you know, trouble transportation wise to, there's no way to take care of them. So I, I think one of the biggest challenges is infrastructure. 
you know, cheap and affordable infrastructure, whether it's rail, bus, light rail, whatever the mode of transportation is, and then to provide somehow for working parents, man and female, the childcare that's necessary. Okay, thank you, James. So I guess this one is not on there. Kind of, oh. All right, um, I, I would just like to piggyback on, on what James has said. Um, in, in my experience, I was part of a, a professional engineer group. They are more like civil engineers and they would lobby a lot. I'm in Philadelphia. They would take trips up to Harrisburg um, if Nesby were to get involved in something like that, where as you go to Harrisburg, if you know there's a policy that the, um, the house is trying to pass and you, so you pick a side, you pick a script and you meet the, the, the law lawmakers and you talk to them and you give them um, a, 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 a reason, a convincing argument as to why they should pass a particular law. And it even can be um, some sort of civil relate, like the childcare is a very good example because we come from communities, our friends and families um, are in bad situations. So it's not like we're just helping people we don't know is we're helping people who are close to us. Uh, so again, maybe get more involved in, in, in the, 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 the lobbying part of the, the, the policy and, and laws. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that kind of answered the question I was just about to propose. <laughs> All right. And then we can go to the next slide. Okay, and I'll be passing it back to Avery to do our debrief. All righty, thank you, Ashley. All right, let's hit that next slide. Okay, so going into our debrief. Um, so what ideas discussed tonight, do we think Nes more NSBE members should be made aware of? And don't don't just say yeah, the strategic hey, plan itself. I'll I mean, jump in again. Um, because I mean just thinking about the grand challenges, one of the grand challenges is like, okay, we have these big ideas, but like how do we implement them? So um that is I think you know, just more conversation, more discussion, using Nesby's, you know, complete brain power um to solve these bigger issues. So I think yeah, more discussions about the plan um is good and just you know brainstorming and yeah i guess you know even putting you know a uh, pen to paper and making some real concrete plans on maybe some short-term goals for yourself personally or for your region or for your chapter um in alignment with the plan cj to your to your point um in terms of you know what's the execution look like um I, 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 I guess I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, if this goal is 10K, you know, what, what's, is there low hanging fruit, such as students who have dropped out, students who have transferred from engineering to another major? Um, if we were to focus specifically on particular um, detractors from that goal, what solutions might we come up with? Um, I, just a quick anecdote at UVA this past year, new dean, new dean noticed that everybody who failed or did not pass, I should say, Calc 1 was either Black or Latino. And she said, we're not doing this. Um, and basically gave them a do-over and created a five-credit Calc 1 class instead of a four-credit because they analyzed all the work and saw that they needed trigonometry stronger trigonometry skills. So, I mean, it, it's this idea of what are the root causes? How do we address those? And in the case of UVA, they were able to kind of quote, save about 20 students who would have either dropped out of engineering altogether or who would have transferred to the college. So why can't, you know, why, why can't we look at replicating those kinds of things elsewhere?
Yeah, and then that's that's also, you know, as a society, there's so many testing grounds we have, you know, whether it be here in Texas or in Chicago or California, like we can share the ideas and things that work. So like Daria's saying, we have good ideas. Okay, write it down and create a toolkit and say, hey, California, this is how you do this, you know? And of course you got to adjust it to your area. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, just more discussion, more of these communication lines and sharing good ideas and helping people implement it in other places that that stuff starts to snowball. Fantastic. And then Richard put in the chat, he said, great point. This is 2022. We need to focus on freshmen and sophomores that need assistance to graduate. And this is, this comment in conjunction with what you had mentioned, Daria, is is something I was even talking to um, one of our regional chairs about today. We were talking about how you focus programming for different, for where people are in their development and different parts of their academic or professional journeys. And one of the things we talked about were, you know, freshmen and sophomores really need to be supported with that heavier academic assistance programming because you need to be set with this stronger foundation to you know make it so that you won't uh, drop out in those early stages you know and we see that there are universities that that um, you know take actions to focus on those students like you mentioned with what happened at UVA I know that UMD even developed its own program called the Keystone program, where Keystone is now in charge of like the intro level engineering courses. And they take their best uh, professors, their best professors in terms of teaching to teach those intro level courses to ensure that more students have a, have a stronger foundation going into their engineering curriculum for the rest of their time at the university. And this program has been going on for I want to say it's at least 10 years, I want to say 15 at this point. And they did see increases in uh, engineering student retention. And so there's no reason that we don't have other folks at different universities think about these things, especially when we're already seeing places where they think about it, try things and, and they move the needle. Yeah, yeah just and part of the premise for the 50K coalition way back when was to uh, even further accelerate some of that um, knowledge sharing and, uh, you know, permeation of, of what works across the different organizations, SHIP, uh, SWE, uh, and, um, and NSBE as the mainstays, if you will. Okay, and so then for our last question of the evening, uh, did this event influence your understanding of what it means to be a culturally responsible Black engineer? And if yes, how so? So I'd like to try and get someone who hasn't shared yet tonight uh, to answer this question first for the usual customers. Hey, Tanya, how's it going? Okay. Uh, Avery, you wanna call the name? Yeah, let's see. Um, I'm gonna go with, Gabriel, have we heard from you yet? Guess we got some people away from keyboard. Can't strike out three times in a row, can we? No, Ashley, pick someone. All right, I'm gonna pick Imani. Did this event influence my understanding? Oh yeah, actually. 
I think I've, okay, so when we were going through it, the game plan, it did sound a lot familiar. So I didn't get a chance to read it beforehand, but um, it was nice to hear how much of a bigger impact. I think it's kind of easy to think about things on a smaller level, but thinking outside of just my chapter. So I came from VCU and graduated about two years, two years ago now, yeah. And so I guess shifting perspective as a professional, like what it means to be culturally responsible or just, yeah, culturally responsible engineer as a professional versus having a direct impact on like a collegiate chapter to now moving into a professional space. So it was nice to hear how much bigger or like to issues that are things that I wouldn't have initially thought about how that would affect the game plan. So I think it did influence my understanding. Thank you. Sorry, can I ask you a quick question, Imani? Because you kind of have like a unique mm -hmm. perspective. So how would you, you touched on it a little bit, how, you know, two years ago you were collegiate and now you're in the professional realm. So like, how has it changed for you being more culturally responsible or just in general being a part of Nesby? Ooh, ah. So I guess it's different because I was like surrounded by Nesby <laughs> in college a little bit. I guess you could say a lot more. And now as a professional, it's a little bit different just because I moved away from home for work. So I'm already like in a new space a little bit <laughs> and then trying to navigate like finding the chapter here. So I haven't quite gotten there yet, but I think is different just because I'm not as surrounded by it as I was when I was a collegiate member. So it wasn't like, so I guess I was just a lot more involved at the collegiate level. And now as a professional, I guess it was kind of a little too easy. I tried not to, but a little too easy to kind of like drift away a little bit. So I think that's one thing I guess I could say that I did really understand about the game plan is what it would look like at the professional level. And that could just be because I'm kind of like at large a little bit. Like, I know we have a chapter, but I'm a little bit at large at the moment. <laughs> gotcha. Thank you. No problem. We can one one last taker for this question. Now one of our usual customers can jump in. Okay, yeah. Uh, just hearing Imani's statement, I mean, I'm pretty much similar myself. I've been out of school for like five years. And I think once you're a professional, it's really, I mean, because you're a student, you know, Nesby's doing so much for you. But then when you're professional, I mean, there's no, like you got a job already, unless you're looking for another job. You know, I think it's more focused on giving back to Nesby and being intentional about, you know, going and finding college students or PCI students and sharing the knowledge you have, the hard lessons you had to learn. Um, and I think this is actually, you know, talking about Game Change 2025, the last page of it, um, they talk about the Sankofa, uh, the Ghanaian mystical bird. And um, I guess it just, it just means go back and get it fetch what you forgot. Um, so I guess the whole concept is like giving back. Uh, I maybe kind of butchered that a little bit. But yeah, I think that's what we have to really start seeing ourselves is like, okay, these opportunities that we had as collegiate students, they didn't come from nothing. Somebody had to, you know, put in the work for us to be able to, you know, reap that fruit. So it's like, we're asking ourselves, okay, well, what seeds are we planting now? Um, and that's, that's what I'd say, what I'd say on that. Great. Thank you, CJ. Okay. Yeah, I like, I like that metaphor. I'll just throw in another metaphor, the idea of passing the baton. Like we're, we carry it for a period of time. 
you know, where are we trying to take it? Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's why the, the, that progression we see throughout all of those membership demographics is so important because you got to understand that those there, there are those people coming after you and you have to prepare them for what they're going to face. We can do that. We can do that. Yeah. All right. My final thoughts. First of all, I want to say that this was a bomb session and it was great uh, talking to you guys about this. So hopefully you can be having more of this. And then second is, um, I really feel a little bit more enlightened about Nesby, like the whole Game Change 25 plan and the initiatives and you know what's going on at the grassroots level. and. I have a personal takeaway to like, you know, just keep on spreading the Nesby gospel to everybody and anybody who needs to hear this, because I know that even from the basics, Nesby has a potential to, you know, change a lot of people's lives professionally, academically, all that, just like it did mine ever since last year. And I could conclude by saying that I started this session with a familiarity rating of six. So I could say it's gone up to like a, 7.5, 7.8. So I'm positive about that. Yes. Increases in numbers, metrics. That's that's what we like to hear and see. All right. Anyone got any any last things they like to share in our final thoughts before I close this out with some announcements? Okay, take the silence as a no. And so with our announcements, um, all right, for this announcement, I'm actually gonna pass it to you, CJ. Yes, so yeah, Titus, you asked for more, you're gonna get it. Um, we have our next book. We're gonna go back to books now. Uh, we're gonna read The Tech That Comes Next by author Afua Bruce. And she will ask, actually be joining us for the discussion. Um, so you can look forward to that. Um, the date is going to be no sooner than um, August 11th, so you have plenty of time to read, um, but go ahead and sign up, and I'll definitely let you know when we get that date official, um, and yeah, so you can look forward to that. Uh, register, you can just type in this link right here, you can, um, and I'll put it in the chat as well. All right. Ashley? Yes. So um, speaking of like, you know, social justice and being involved in the Black community, if you're not aware, um, Nesby has created our call for social justice, which is RISE. So RISE stands for Research and Development, Innovative Thinking, Social Emergence, and Excelling Before the Pressure. So we are forming a task force right now, as of right now, it is currently CJ and I in it and we would love if you guys are interested to fill out um to scan this qr code and fill it out and then from there we'll be doing interviews and having more people on the task force so a few of the things that you can look forward to on this task force will be like helping planning and developing um our initiative um it's fairly new to um, nesby but we want to turn it into an overall program so you'll be helping out with that um creating events of course and also helping managing our, our um, progress matrix. Thank you. Okay, and then some information about upcoming professionals events. Oh, okay, picture look. All right, hey, so. Maybe, is Russell still on? I uh, do not believe he's, I do okay. not see him. All right, sorry, you can go for it. Okay. Oh, I, I tried checking too, but hey, false, false, gotta fall to somebody. So uh, for, for, for this upcoming event, um, the High SIG Healthcare Innovation uh, Special Interest Group is having a webinar with Philips that's going to discuss the challenges of medical device innovation. 
Uh, so if that is of interest to you in terms of your professional goals or just, you know, as we talked about, you know, how we can use our technical expertise to impact our community, as you see, it's highlighting uh, innovation for low resource settings so that we can have equitable care outcomes. So obviously this has some alignment with what it is that we discussed earlier uh, in our discussion today. So if that is of interest to you, uh, the link is on the slide. CJ also dropped it into chat and that is coming up uh, three weeks from now. So Wednesday, July 27th uh, from eight to 9.30 p.m. Next, we've got a webinar coming up with PepsiCo called Reinventing Yourself in a New Industry. Uh, this is an event where you'll have the opportunity to engage in a live panel discussion and have engagement with PepsiCo engineers, of course, on the topic of how to reinvent yourself in a new industry. Uh, I think it's that part's rather self-explanatory. Um, in terms of registration, you've got the link up on this slide. Uh, that is happening on Friday, July 19th, isn't a Friday. One second, let me get my numbers right. Okay, that is a Tuesday. Tuesday, July 19th, from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 to 5 Central. So if you're interested, the link to sign up is on the screen, and I'm certain CJ will be dropping it in the chat relatively soon. All righty, and then lastly, we've got PDC. So PDC is our Professional Development Conference, an opportunity for folks to learn about the latest innovations in engineering and technology and to get exposure and opportunities for your own professional development, so to assist you in your career. Uh, this is open to, of course, our professional demographic, but collegiates are also able to attend as well. So if you're looking to get yourself uh, started on the right foot for your career, or you are at any point in your corporate and industry career, and you wanna take your skills to the next level, then PDC is definitely for you. Uh, this year it is taking place in Miami. So y'all should go. <laughs> uh, not, not just for Miami being a fun city. Uh, PDC is a great opportunity for your your development and of course that's what we're focusing on as nesby members but you know have some fun too code of conduct all right so if you'd like to learn more oh wait so want to learn more information pdc.nesby.org uh, i believe cj got that in the chat already yes he did and yes rated e for engineering that is definitely what that is for. All righty, so I think that covers all of the announcements. It might be for everyone. Uh, I, th I think T Titus was going for a punt, but it's okay, it's okay. Well, engineering's for everyone too, so it's all good, it's all good. All righty, next slide. Uh, yeah, that's all we got. Oh, we have the, okay. the book list if anybody wants to see it. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it, Avery. Oh, fantastic. And these are the books that we've already gone through. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, so it's growing. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I mean, if we're looking at this list, The Miseducation of the Negro, um, it's a very great book. Highly recommend reading it. Um, I'll just plug that one. I mean, CJ, since, we, since we're getting so many books, is it, are, are we going to end up having maybe a booth at, at our, one of our next conventions or something? Or is, is that in the works? Sounds like something that we could talk more about for sure. So let me add that. I mean, you know, it's definitely getting some brand, you know, to the branding part of Game Changing 2025. You definitely, um, everyone knows, you know, whether people participate or not, 
is, is secondary as, as I shared before, you know, as, as you know, our, you know, the culture, our culture, people may not participate, but they definitely know. And, and the Nesby Crate brand is growing and we could definitely leverage, you know, since when our books are growing and the conversations are growing, I think it might be a good time to do some branding at our events and back that up with either books or, 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 the, or as well as the, the people that write those books. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Richard. Fantastic. Well, alrighty. Well, I uh, formally, I think that brings us to the end of our discussion for tonight. So again, thank you all for joining. Uh, it's fantastic. And Russell's back on now that we finished those announcements. Perfect. <laughs> but alrighty, you all enjoy the rest of your night and. Hopefully we'll see you around in the next discussion. Yes, guys, take care. Cool, cool. Um, thanks again, Avery and Ashley. Um, yeah, I'll just stop this recording.